John Burke. John Burke in Ockram. In Ockram. In Ockram, County Galway, by the way. Right. There is a few Where we're Ockram. actually able to speak English yeah. rather than Irish. Yeah, than Irish, no. There wouldn't be much Irish spoken in Galway. No, we have Irish schools. Mm hmm. Where the kids can go on and do all subjects to Irish. That's great. Which that great. preserves yeah. the culture. It That's is, really it, important. It, it, it is coming back. Yeah. It is coming back, but. Um, it will, it'll, it'll, watch it'll, it'll take over again. Irish will come back. Good morning. It's another gorgeous morning on the Ireland Way. Day 21. And I'm just leaving Ogram. Thank you to Paddy, the hiking leader, who put out an appeal and Kathleen responded and I camped in their backyard but was treated like royalty. And did you see the picture of my broken poles? Well, these are new ones, gifted from Kathleen. I left her my old ones, and I had broken the tip off. And Kathleen said, well, now I've got extra poles. She said, they're not even being used. They're just in the garage. So she went, she got me the poles. They're great. I left my old ones with her. Thank you so much, Kathleen and Peter. Your kindness will certainly be remembered. Ooh, here we are now rush hour in Ireland. So this is a very typical nice high-end home. <laughs> the word just went out. Stranger danger! Stranger danger! Run! Run! beautiful rest spot and sometimes I just get hit with the grief it's gonna take a while so if you're missing someone just know you're not alone there's lots of us missing someone and it takes a while. So let it take the time. I guess that's part of what I'm doing on this walk. It's just taking the time. Well, look at this. A plowed path through the long pasture grass. Well, it'll be interesting to see how long that lasts, but thank you farmer or volunteer or worker, whoever came up with that idea and put the time in to do it. That's going to make such a big difference. I'm okay. <laughs> well, that was a bit of a scare. I thought, I thought I really may had not broken it because I know what a break feels like, but I thought I had torn something. I went flying, man. Here's where I tripped. I came along here, not looking at my feet or the ground, but looking at the camera. And I hit this, my left foot. See, here's where, here's where my right foot was on high ground, and my left foot went right into this hole, and then my body went flying over there. There, there's my landing zone, and the phone went with me. But I seem to have strong ankles, which is weird, which is beneficial to a hiker crossing very uneven ground. So let's continue on and see how it feels. Well, it's about 15 minutes later, and it's fine. <laughs> I'm scared to move it left or right, and it could probably do with a taping for stability. Seriously, it's amazing. Like, honest to God, my foot, my leg was vertical, and my foot was sideways, like on its side. It went, <sighs> oh, it, it hurt like a bucker when it happened. But then within, like I sat there for a good five minutes, breathing it out, and then 
it just kind of stopped. It felt like all the blood in my body rushed to that area. Like it got just full of energy and um, tingling. And it was like, we need attention down in the ankle, stat, all red blood cells, heal, heal, heal. And it did. Amazing. And now my understanding is somebody has to come back and flip these and then stack them. And when they stack them, it's called footing the turf. And then the trail turned to water and then rubber. Look at this. Very comfortable and springy. Oh, got to be careful not to turn my foot out. A bench. Oh, don't mind if I do. Thank you very much. So I wanted to talk about hiking and eating, especially in the heat. So I just finished a very nice lunch, but you know what? I wasn't that hungry for it. And you hear a lot of hikers say, oh, I don't like to eat when I'm on trail. Yeah, and then they feel weak and then they feel tired and then they get headaches and then they get muscle cramps and then they lose lots of weight. I knew if I don't eat now, I'm going to feel weak later. And in the heat, that's just not good. So you need those calories, you need the protein, you need the vitamins, you need the energy. So if you're not feeling like eating on the trail, just get on a schedule, open your mouth and get it in there. <laughs> so this is the easy way to hop an electric fence when they have the plastic over the wire, just one leg and the other. And it doesn't matter if you make contact because you've got that insulating sleeve. Beautiful moment, taking care of each other. <laughs> These are a, a very video worthy dogs because oh, they're the sure. only two dogs in all of Ireland that didn't bark yeah. at me. <laughs> Buddy and Max. Yeah. Oh, Teresa, thank you so much no, for the no, cold water. Fine. No problem at all. Mm -hmm. Look what I got. This is from Teresa, or Teresa, as she says. She offered me a cup of tea, but it's just too hot. Maybe hike for another hour and a half or so. Um, I'm flexible tonight because I've already reached my destination, but it's too early to stop. It's only 5 p.m. So I'm going to keep going. Look at this clear, clean style. The manicured field and the inviting freshly painted gate. Make sure you close it even if it was open i think it's probably good good hiking manners since we're on their private property to leave it closed behind us feeling happy to be in the shade i'm sure it hit 30 degrees again today but it is a spring heat wave and it's supposed to die down in about a week so here's the unveiling of the folded ankle. We don't have much definition there. And we definitely got some chubby swelling action here. But the good news is it's not through the whole foot. And I don't think it's up the leg. Okay, the ankle's a little bit thicker, but as mom would say, a galloping horse wouldn't notice. Anyway, I want to show you my campsite. Look where I get. The trail just runs straight along those trees. Uh, so if I hear, you know, so I can hear anybody approaching. But it's too hot to put the fly on just yet. Wow, it's almost seven o'clock and I'm just airing out my sleeping bag on top and it's acting as shade. Oh boy, with these hot days and warm nights, this is what I wake up to every day. <laughs> it's also soaking on the 
underside of the fly where it isn't soaking is inside the tent although it was dripping on me this morning which is just a lovely thing to wake up to well i think the ankle really liked its rest last night that puffiness that was all around here seems to have gone right down so i just saw a red fox just going along the path and he stopped and he's like hey what are you doing there there's not usually anybody there I get asked a lot about blisters and the fact is I don't get blisters. I wear in gingy toe sock liners followed by darn tough wool socks. Next come the gaiters. These are Dirty Girl brand but you can wear whatever gaiters you want. I forgot legs go on on next. Now Normally, I just tuck them away in my pack and put them on when I need them. But on the Ireland way, they're on, they're up, they're down, they're up, they're down. So I now I'm putting them on first thing in the morning, pushing them down, fold them over, and tuck them in my socks. So when I hit the rough areas, I just pull them up and zip them shut and protect myself from stinging nettle and such. And that's it. The feet are all packed away and ready for the day. Yeah, ready to take a pounding. Good morning. It's day 22 on the Ireland Way. 1,011 kilometer walk. And for me, I'm devoting it to my deceased parents. Ugh, I hate saying that word. Okay, Vo devoting it to my parents. Dad passed away four years ago mom three months ago and uh, we just brought her ashes back to Dublin and buried her with her parents completing her immigration story and now I'm hiking from the south coast to the north coast of Ireland in both of their memories another soccer pitch front garden well, I've run into three of these wells so far side of the road and I'm sure in their day they were a welcome resource to the community they don't work. <laughs> These bumps are dry. Whoops. Unfortunately, not everybody is thrilled to see a stranger come to the door. I just um, rang a door, but I had to get water. I was almost out. So I went up to the front door, rang the bell, and she opened the door looking very distressed with the sound of a crying baby in the background. I was like, oh, shoot. So I just asked for water and she she did willingly oblige, which is very kind. Filled my bottles, but just, you're welcome. And then the door closed. So I'm really sorry to have disturbed her, but I'm very grateful for the water. So here's a funny thing. Going through the bog, since I started on this material, I'm getting static electricity shocks. Isn't that weird? Like, on my hands on my holding the foam oh no no there's the little metal pieces at the top interesting so it's conducting it through the metal tips at the bottom and coming out through the little tiny there little tiny metal piece there at the top and and shock shock shocking me all the way And that was my shade spot for the last 20 minutes. Ooh, I was getting hot. I mean, overheated hot. Ooh, this is like, you know, when you get on the roller coaster ride and it always starts off slowly and goes into a dark tunnel and you don't know what's going to happen. That's a roller coaster sound effect. And I'm back out in the frying pan. On cover. I was for the well. For the well? Yeah. Oh, very nice. Well, now, through Ballygar, 
well fed, well watered, picked up a few supplies. And that's it for the Hymeny Way, starting the Suk Valley Way, or Suk Valley Way. Oh, this is a welcome relief from the sun. It's a 4K walk through a protected forest area. I can roll the pants down and uh, not going to overheat. I was really hot when I arrived in Ballygar and I drank and drank and drank and sat and ate and sat. Washed out a couple things in the pub washroom and uh, I feel so much better now. I think I stayed there about an hour and a half. I just had to. It was just too hot to continue. So now it's about 4.30 in the afternoon. My plan is to go to I like to go to seven. What the heck? <laughs> this kind of quieter walking with less visual stimulation gives me lots of time to ponder my purpose on my walk. I've noticed that when I do meet long distance hikers or walkers, everybody's doing it for a reason. It may even just start out as a passion for walking or fitness or hiking, but it usually has a greater meaning behind it. It seems that people who are on long distance walks are either walking towards something or away from something. In my case, the death of my mother triggered this idea and it has really grown into something profound for me. And if you are a prayer, it's a wonderful, active way to pray. Going up Mount Mary at the end of the day. Look how the forest is covered in moss. I just saw my, my sixth deer. There's no way I could have done this in the earlier heat. This way the sun's a bit lower, cast in good shade, get it done at the end of the day. That way I don't have to do it tomorrow. And hoping to camp at the top. Hopefully there'll be an opening in the forest. I read there's a transmitter tower, so there should be some kind of a level area.